Coming up, we're going to talk about the Universal City Walk restaurant, specifically the table service restaurant, saying whether or not we love them right now or whether we think they should be left behind in the dust. So, from the Bob Varley studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Universal Edition of the Diz Unplugged. This is episode 208 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect universal vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I am your host, Craig Williams. I'm joined alongside by my co-host... Mr. Rhino Clavin. Hello. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode. We have a dining-themed episode for you, and one where we're not in the parks eating crappy food. Who would have thunk? Who would have? I mean, I guess the Mardi Gras food wasn't that bad, but, you no, know. I was going to say, it was like, we had pretty good luck. Yeah. Here's here's the deal. Here's uh, here's what's happening with this, yo. Here's here's the, the diddly with it. Uh, lately, we've been getting requests about when are we going to start eating at good restaurants again (laughs) um and not even necessarily good restaurants just uh it's been a long time since we've eaten at anything table service even i think the last table service review we did was nbc sports grill and brew oh my gosh when it opened no 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 when we did the uh gluten-free and vegan review yeah yeah. That was maybe almost a year ago now, I it guess. It was yeah. a long time ago, for sure. I, I don't know the exact date on it, but it was a long, long time. And since then, we've been... We've been... We've been... We've been... Oh, we've, you are what you eat. We've, we've been eating at a lot of garbage... <laughs> <laughs> like dumpsters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... Sorry, I I thought I was I was not gonna finish that, and I thought I was about to say the b word, but I think I got <laughs> garbage out, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, if I'll bleep it if I have to, uh, I'll do that in post. But yeah, we've been eating at a lot of terrible quick service places that haven't been like overly terrible, but have just been, uh, you know, not really quite hitting the mark, and well, especially like Cafe Four. But you know, there's been some highlights in there, like the vegan dining that we did with the Impossible Burger. Burger uh, and the Mel's, uh, the chicken without an E. So there, there's been. Remember the Chinese food rest? The Chinese food tasted like cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> that was at a uh, comic strip cafe. Yeah. Oh, there's been some bad ones. Yeah. There have been some bad ones. And so, yeah, we've been getting the question of when are we going to start going back and, and eating at the other places again? And God, I wish I could say like two years ago is when we should start going back and eating at the other ones. But we kind of made it this goal of ours to say, well, we're we're, for the show purpose, we are going to try to get through all these restaurants that we will only hit once every five years. And that's that's why we're still doing it. But uh, that doesn't mean that we don't go on our own or have ever gone on our own to the other places in Universal City Walk or that we're not qualified to talk about it. We are. So... uh, Oh my gosh. Okay, real quick, because we're talking about food. I didn't know uh-huh. this, and I feel like I we have talked about this, and I told you about it, but my friend Nicole was in town. You know mm-hmm. Nicole? And um, her big thing is, did you know the carts outside of Diagon Alley serve baked potatoes? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm i like, how long have I been going in here, and I never noticed one of the carts has baked potatoes at it, because it was a little shack, and I, I saw like the chips and the soda, and I was like, and she got one, and let me, I tried like a bite of it, and I was like, this is a really good baked potato. It's at the uh, shack right outside of Creature yeah. when he's looking out the window. The problem is kind of similar to other foods that we run into from time to time. There's not a lot of times of the year at... Do you at, want a real big hot baked potato? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's exactly what I don't know what you're talking about. When it's 90 degrees outside, there's nothing I want more than a hot potato with hot cheese and... Yeah. I'm going to poop myself just talking about yeah, this. But it's not basic potatoes. It's not like you're going to walk up and just get like a baked potato. It's, it's, they are loaded. Sauced. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and no, they're, they are good. I, I can't believe you never had one before. No, I, I tried hers and I was like, it, it, I, I was, you know, I was like, ah, this won't be that good, but it was good. No, it's, it's, uh, 
I mean, it's one of those things that's kind of, it's hard to screw up. It could be screwed up. You could I not would, cook the potato. Yeah, I, I would not put it past a couple of them to get screwed up on a daily basis. But yeah, no, not enough people eat there in general. I mean, every now and then you'll see like a line of three or four people pop up. And sometimes you wonder like, are they just getting in line because other people are in line or are they genuinely excited like for, the for the food potato, there? Yeah. yeah. I, but, I, I, I just appreciate they have these little like pop-up things. Like, cause then they had that mimosa bar that you and I walked by too. Yeah. That we yeah. saw that yeah, was like, we, oh. didn't, we should have investigated that more, but no, yeah. The baked Next potato time. though, that's been there since it opened. I mean, really? that's been, yeah, that's, Sweetie. that's all the way back to, I don't think it was there maybe for like the first week that it opened, but then it opened up quickly after that. It's kind of, it's one of those things just like, the the merchandise stand right outside of King's Cross. It's there, but it's so underutilized because A, it's not what it's not necessarily what you want, and B, it's in a place that you don't spend a lot well, of time. You, you don't out stop in. and stare at it because yeah. it was like it, it it was one of those places where it was like I knew they were serving something there. I just thought it was like a drink shack or yeah. something like that because the the font's not huge. It's not like oh potato shack like um and then the other, the merchandise one has um, Grimwald Place merchandise now because that's yeah. where it is. And you're like, oh, before it, because remember when it first opened, the whole theming was there was always a team member out front that would be like, where are all these people coming from? Where are they going? Yeah. To kind of be like, guide people in and out of it, but to also keep the illusion that London was just London and it wasn't anything else related to oh, it. Oh, yeah. They were selling the cat in the hat, uh, big giant hats with the Union Jack yeah, on yeah. it. And Joey would have loved yeah. this place. <laughs> That's not what they were selling, but they did sell a lot of like awful third-party knockoff London yeah. garbage. London, baby! Why do I keep calling everything garbage today? Everything is garbage. You're okay. the opposite of everything is awesome. I take a shot every time I call something garbage today. Everything just do that. Garbage. Uh, so, <laughs> anyways, beyond that uh, strange potato offshoot that we went on there, uh, there's a lot of great dining at Universal City Walk, a lot of good sit down restaurants, uh, to the point that a lot of people complain during our reviews saying, well, why would you eat that when you could just go out to City Walk and that's sit down what we at a restaurant? That's say in the review. Yeah, and that's what I tell myself every single time we do that. It's like, why can't I just go get another big plate of nachos at Margaritaville? And the answer is type 2 diabetes and also <laughs> our duty to all the masses out there uh, to make sure that they don't get tricked into going to Circus McGurkis Cafe Stupendous or in places of that nature. I think about it like dried spaghetti <laughs> well except we know that's no longer true because the spaghetti is not dried it's soaking wet <laughs> in spaghetti water yeah good old starch water so what we're going to do on this episode is we are going to go down through the table service restaurants at universal city walk and we are going to uh, kind of not really go into what they serve and all of that just give you give you our, our opinions on them whether we we love them or whether we'd like to see them left behind the next time it comes around to doing a revamped city walk and we're just going to play it like that so why don't we get things kicked off i'm going to go from the bottom of my list to the top and let's start with pat o'brien's rhino love it leave it you know i i don't actually think i've ever like sat down and eaten at pat o'brien's mm -hmm. like as a meal i've gone we've gone there we've had drinks there with like listeners and stuff and we've I went with Jill once to some sort of like, uh, because she's involved in like a culinary stuff is, uh, to some event there once. And they had like small, small plates that you could go up and get stuff. And that was good. But you know how I feel about piano bars. I hate them because they're just people slamming on pianos while I'm trying to have a conversation and but that's not till later in the night when it's, they stop I know but it's meals. all I can think of when I think about it, but it, I don't, I don't dislike Pat O'Brien, so like, yeah, maybe we got to give that one a shot as a sit down. Yeah, we know we we never finished. That was the next one we were going to do. That and Lombards, and then we kind of got distracted with the quick service. Yeah, so we need to we need to go back around and give that. So you're you're more on the side of leave it or love yeah, it. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like I don't want to get rid of the hurricanes that they have at City Walk. So it's kind of like I say I say. uh what is Pat O'Brien's even theme to? Is it supposed to be a Mardi Gras bar? Well, it's based off of Pat O'Brien's in New Orleans. Okay, that's so, okay. And it's 
that's a, that's the part that always hooked me up every time before that I understood. Irish thing. That well, that like... was that was it. Before I went to uh, New Orleans, the the only time I've been there, and like I didn't even know Pat O'Brien's was there. So when I walked by Pat O'Brien's and found out, like, oh, that's that is Pat yeah. O'Brien's. That's that's the real one. Then I'm like, oh, I get it now. I get it with Universal. I was like, I always just thought it was an Irish restaurant. Yeah, I did too. (laughs) I was like, oh, that's where you can go get your shepherd's pie, and it's probably not even there. (laughs) But I'm – okay, so I'm I'm guessing – that I'm probably where you would end up not knowing with you not knowing that this was an option. I would love to leave this as like probably like half of a bar and then half of a quick service restaurant. Yeah. I, I could see that because I, I feel like it's got a, it uses a, the restaurant itself is in a large amount of space. And I do like the bar portion of it, yeah. the side of that. I feel like it's it's I appreciate that it's there. Um, but then like the restaurant side is all set up weird. And like if you made it into quick service, then you could at least have an, another option there for quick service. that You can just grab and go, especially when you've been. You know, if you're out at City Walk for a night out and you've had a couple drinks and you want something before you hop in your Uber or go back to your hotel or whatever, you know. Exactly, yeah. I mean, I'm not talking like it doesn't need to be a pizza window or something like that, but some greasy sandwiches or... Like po' boys. Make it all like po' boys or something like that, you know. Yeah, make a New Orleans quick service restaurant attached to it and go along with Pat O'Brien's as a bar and then I think you kind of get the best of both worlds. I know people do eat there, uh, but it doesn't open up until after lunch service. So it only opens up for dinner. It's only open for a short amount of time, and then it turns into the nightclub. I feel like the nightclub idea of City Walk is very antiquated at this point and something that they should move beyond when really you only have the groove, uh, Red Coconut, Bob Marley, uh rising star and then pat o'brien's like that's your clubs i think they need to turn it more into being like okay we've got a dance club and then these are the bars and restaurants like in i'm not saying like get away from a night out vibe completely but like focus it it feels like it spreads out everywhere all of a sudden and like all everything so you don't even think to go up there it says a lot that i've had an annual pass for like 10 years and i still have never eaten at pat o'brien's yeah i don't i don't like the idea of I, I, I don't mind clubs there. I don't like the idea that there's still places that uh, you get charged in if you're just like the yes. average person yeah. walking up. If you're, you know, if you're staying on property, you get into the clubs. If you have an annual pass, you get into the clubs. If you're a team member, you get into the clubs. It's like, so there's plenty of ways to get in, but I, none of, in my opinion, none of the clubs are worth ever spending any money on. And so for that reason, just drop that whole attitude with it and let's revitalize how we work these bars and restaurants there. So that's why I'm at at Pat O'Brien's. I think the bar portion and where the piano bar is, that needs to stay. But in terms of being a restaurant, I feel like they could leave that behind, go to a quick service style and kind of revamp it that way. And you get the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hard Rock Cafe. I don't know. I was thinking about this one as soon as you started. Like Hard Rock Cafe can be a staple for a lot of the people. I know it's a, a, a like a flag for Pete. Basically, whenever we go anywhere, you know, in in your in international waters and stuff, you see that, and you might be somebody who's not super adventurous either. It's a it's a a safety spot for you or something like that. Or there's people who just really like the Hard Rock. I had one friend that always wanted something from the Hard Rock wherever we went. I'm not friends with them anymore. No, um, but I. So it's hard because it's a staple. Like, I like that they have the concerts. Like, it has that venue where you could have a concert or see a comedian or something like that there. Although, I the only time I ever had tickets, I ended up having to, like, go home and I missed the concert. And you know what it was for? Daughtry. Yeah, oh, no. Yeah. All that you were after way, was a night with Daughtry. Way in the beginning, when they yeah. first were right off American Idol. And, um, yeah, I'm embarrassed about it just as much as you were to hear it. But, uh, so, I, my thing is, like, the food is just yeah. I feel like NBC has essentially that better version of the food they're serving at Hard Rock. So like why do I want to go pay more at Hard Rock and get a really big souvenir glass and all this stuff? I don't know. But I feel like it's a huge yeah. space. Sometimes that's not always true. It is a very huge space. It's taking up a lot of real estate, but the every time I end up at that Hard Rock or any Hard Rock 
it always inevitably goes back to like, okay, A, it's not as bad. It's become a bigger joke than it really is. Like, yeah, it's this isn't like hand dipped fried appetizers that they're doing. It's it's bags pulled out of the freezer yeah. and being thrown down. But none of the food is like offensive it's there's something you can always find yeah. there and even the pricing you look at it and you're like oh no this is always bad and then you look at other places like actually it's right on par with a lot of other places so honestly it's a safety is what i feel I, like it has a spot and the building at universal is is iconic. yeah I, I wouldn't want to get rid of that so it's I, got the glitter the like the not yeah. glitter but i forget what they're called but the things that blow in the wind and it yeah. makes it look like it's moving so as much as some people would love to see it go and open up some more real estate there i'm i'm all on board on leaving it uh, leaving it there i don't love it but it's fine where it is it's got the berlin wall behind it it does that is true there's a lot of history in those walls I mean the Berlin Wall, but I mean the walls in the restaurant. <laughs> it's like uh, <laughs> there's yep. a lot, yeah, <laughs> lot happening. So uh, next on the list, Bob Marley tribute to freedom. Actually, after that dining experience we had there, I, de- I would be like, keep it. Yeah, it's it's been a couple of years since that happened, but I still stand by what I we said at that point. It's serving interesting food mm-hmm. that's flavorful, uh, decently priced, and very easy to get into because most people are kind of. It's up Steered in that away. no man's land area. Yeah. So you're like, and it's like what you said, it has, it's, it's, uh, it's different than any of the food you're going to find any of the other places at City Walk. So yeah. that's what I like about it. And it's not different being like, oh, it's not good. It's, it was delicious. Yeah. Only other thing I would do with it is kind of what I said with Pat O'Brien's. If, if you want to keep the idea that at night it turns into a party place, maybe convert it to half of a bar and then half of a half of a quick service because yeah. i know i know a lot of these dishes could still be converted into quick service style food and i think this is one of them it would take away from some of the dishes but they could easily be doing jerk chicken sandwiches mm. and they they could be doing a lot with it maybe i just really want sandwiches hey the chicken store called and they said they're all out of you yeah well the jerk store called <laughs> They're all out of you. It's the jerk chicken store. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> next on the list, Margaritaville. Oh yeah, I, I you got to keep this. I think I, again, this is another one of those places where it's like what you said. You think about it and you're like, I don't want to go there. But when you do go there, it's actually not that bad. Plus, those nachos are really good. Plus, I love margaritas. But then you've got you got Antihodes, which is right up the Antihitos, which is right up the street. <laughs> And I'm like, these are two margarita-oriented places. I don't know the name anymore because this joke so has been going on. Many I years don't and know. you still can't say Antihitos. I can't because I don't know what it's called anymore. Antihodes. Antihitos. Yeah. Uh, okay. As you want to get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. As much as I do enjoy the food here and kind of like Hard Rock, every time I eat there, I'm like, oh, actually, it's not that bad. It's it's pretty good. It's one of those it's just one of those restaurants where I I feel like kind of like Hard Rock again too it's taking up a very big amount of space there. Yeah, it's uh, huge. And the fact that it even goes across the walkway then with the other bar with the lone lone Well, the lone palm. palm. Yeah. yeah, that's I oh, oh I, that's what I was going to ask you would that include getting rid of the oh, lone yeah. palm because oh, well. I I like the lone palm. I like it, but it's it's just so much space there. Well, cuz they have the lone palm then they have the palm, porch. Yeah. the porch, and the other, and this, and then the the restaurant snakes around inside, and yeah. it's a lot. Do you think that when they open the resort on one ninety two, the restaurant will eventually go away on City Walk? I don't think so, and I'm not sure how Margaritaville Resort. Like, I don't know if they have like a marquee Margaritaville there. I, I genuinely no. There is a, there's a rule. I uh, somebody told me about this. There's a rule about Margaritavilles that there can't be one within a certain number of miles from the other one. So they were saying the resort isn't going to have one because of the one at city walk. Okay. See, I don't know. I, I will be honest. I know it is a big part of Orlando and I know there's plenty of other sites who are covering it and excited about it. Uh, we don't, no, I don't care. We don't really <laughs> cover Jimmy like, Buffett we, related things. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we do cover stuff off property. We don't cover a lot of stuff like that in particular so it's something that's been off my radar i know they're they're bringing the one movie theater that people to margarita like. yeah it's it's another kind of not like alamo draft house style but it's it's another chain of movie theaters that 
a lot of people. That's going to be a big deal, though, because I was literally driving down 192, and I was like, I can get why some like younger person or something might like living down here. You're in a tourist trap, but I was like, the only thing it's missing down here is a movie theater. Yeah. And now they're adding a movie theater. I mean, that's going to... Yeah. People I, will never have to leave that side of town I anymore. I think. But again, I genuinely know nothing about it. Like, I don't know if it's a hotel. I don't know if it's I, I think homes. it's got, like, water slides or something involved with it. No. I, I, I drove by the other day. I was like, what? But the thing is, it's not really tied into a theme park, so why would we deal with it? Yeah, and I know it's a place you could stay when you're going to the parks, just not for me. So, Margaritaville, I, I will enjoy it for as long as it's here, but if they told me tomorrow that Margaritaville was going hey, to I'm close down... I'm not going to chain myself to the... Yeah. That's where I'm at, too. Uh, Bubba Gump Shrimp Company. I'd get rid of it. I don't like yeah. it. I, 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 I try to like it. I've got, I, I actually went again. Like I know we did our dining review a while back, and I bled forever because that chip that sliced my mouth open. And then I went back again, and like it's just always a place where I'm like, I don't want anything on the menu. I don't want to go here. I don't. I love Forrest Gump. I, I think the movie is fantastic, and I get like, how this it just feels like one of those places that is a road sign tourist event and i get that's what we're at we're at a theme park and that's what people want but it it feels very side of i-95 to me it's the first restaurant you see as you enter city walk and i feel like it should be something better than that well it always has that dirty shrimp out there too yeah well i, I like the shrimp but yeah it's just it's not the food there will never live up to its location of yeah. being the first thing you see. So a lot of people come in and like, oh, well, let's just go straight there. Or it's the last thing you see as you're leaving. Well, maybe we should stop in Bubba Gump. Or they just know the name from Forrest Gump or from other tourist locations. It's just kind of a it, – it's a shame yeah. that it's there. But it is – I would like to see it go, but – that's like uh, to some chocolate emporium and no, savory feast it. kitchen. Keep it, but clean it. <laughs> I know it's hard because I have never had a, like a full on negative when it comes to the food I'm eating and everything like that. I've never had a bad experience. I understand they've had this issue with rats, roaches, health. It department. was just roaches. Okay. That's I, I'm, I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. Disney had two of their very popular restaurants have hepatitis outbreaks in them. Yeah. So like stuff happens. I, yeah, I don't want it to be dirty, but I like, I like the meal that they serve when it's served cleanly, clean, yeah. all that stuff. You know, oh, I'm, I'm all for it. I think it, even though it was the last of kind of the changes to city walk, it, it did exactly what we've kind of talked about with with some of the other restaurants. It it took it took a bad restaurant that was there before. Well, not bad. We actually enjoyed our meal there, but something that not everyone was lining up to be there with NBA City. Yeah, and it made it it made it an attraction that had long lines after opening. And still, some nights you'll see. Well, the building's cool too. Up. Yeah, the building's cool. the The food is creative, inventive. Yeah. good portions, good pricing, unique drinks. It it kind of hit everything. Yeah, uh, Instagrammable milkshakes. Like mm -hmm. it just it literally clicked every checkbox <laughs> that you you'd expect from a a theme park restaurant. So, absolutely needs to stay. But Antajitos, authentic Mexican food. Now I don't know. I don't even know what the name of that restaurant is. I actually dined there fairly recently, yeah. and I feel like I I love Mexican food is one of my favorite types of food, and I just feel like it's being it's become very sloppy. It's very. I feel like everything there is like two, four, two to like five dollars more than it should be, and if not more and like no matter what margarita you're ordering you're probably going to get a lot of like mix in it and i don't want i wanted this to be what it what it's trying to be i guess it just it, it i feel like it's a building filled with promise and doesn't deliver on any of them you know see i still disagree with you on terms of the drinks i've never had a bad drink there i just well I, that was the thing i i tried one random one and i was like it was literally, it was like all ice, and then the drink was not I'm good. I, I, I guess, should have just sent it back. I guess, yeah. Well, that's what I would do. If, if a bartender makes you a bad drink, that's not... If they make it poorly, I don't think that's a problem that you should have to deal with. If they make it poorly, then that's on them. If it's just a drink that you don't care for, 
then that's on you for ordering a drink you didn't care for. But if a bartender makes a drink bad, I'm not I'm not going to pay for something that wasn't made properly, especially yeah. if I've had it before and I know what it should taste like and it didn't live up to standards. That's bad bartending on that. I that's mean, I, I to... like the margaritas when we did the Disney the Disney versus Universal margarita yep. video. No, it's I think their margaritas are solid. The food, it's the issue is like you said, it's just okay food. It's it's priced a little too high for what it is and while it's called authentic mexican it's not very authentic and it's also not very interesting it's uh it's pretty pretty routine and pretty boring back in the day when it opened i I know i still harp on this all the time when there was two menus upstairs and downstairs the upstairs menu was the killer that was the best the downstairs menu was what you wanted to avoid but everyone wanted to eat downstairs because that's the safe food and they would go upstairs and be like, "Well, why can't I have what's downstairs? I don't want a, I don't want a thirty nine dollar coffee rubbed ribeye." It's like, but that was, st- I still dream. That's why I make coffee rubbed ribeyes to this day <laughs> at my house because of it. It's that good, and it's just, it's never, it never really found its groove for me. I don't think you necessarily need to wipe it off the earth. I think they're about due to have a complete change in that menu and how it's sold. Maybe come up with new recipes and keep keep the same Mexican street food style on yeah. the menu. Just come up with new recipes. Come yeah. up with something different. Try to find something that's like really blowing people away. But then again, Mexican's one of those things. You can serve bad Mexican and people are still going to like it. It's just it's an it's an easy food group to kind of to kind of ease into mm-hmm. not food group cuisine well i say keep so I, i'm gonna say keep the restaurant because i want the mexican restaurant i think i'm i'm keep the restaurant but, but change the, the menu. inside yeah <laughs> not the inside visually yeah. just yeah yeah uh, redo the menu scoop it out like an content. avocado yeah. oh yeah uh vivo italian kitchen Oh, I, I thought I, this is another one of those things. You know how I always feel? I always say I don't like going to Italian restaurants because I always hate how I feel when I leave. You know, whether it's good or bad, I'm always like too full, heavy, weighed down. But Vivo, the couple times we've gone, I, I've actually had pretty good experience there. And yeah. I like the food and I think it's pretty, pretty well priced, you know, yeah. for what it is. And um, I like I like what it looks like, too, in there. So, yeah, I so this is tough for us. Uh, we went to Italy last year, and before in the past, you always would hear from people saying like, "Well, I like it, but it's not like it's not super authentic Italian." And and after going there, yeah, and we ate at some crappy places. We ate at some good places. I could even say the same thing about Italy. It's that there are some places in Italy that aren't oh, yeah. authentic yeah. and good. And I would say, you know, there are a handful of places in Orlando that I think make Italian that is on par, even at times better than what we had when we were actually in Italy. And uh, with Vivo's one that I would say is on par. It's not, not everything is always the same flavors, techniques, and ingredients. But I think it gets the essence done, and it has it delivers good sized portions, uh, flavorful food, and and just it, a, not an over expensive price. Yeah, and I feel like it it's got diverse options. Yeah, so it's not just like you going in and you getting spaghetti. Yeah, you know. Yeah, no, it's a full full range of Italian food. So there's something there for everyone. So I'm I'm on board with keeping it. Now, finally, the cowfish. I I love cowfish. I. Uh, or like I love the I love what cowfish was. Mm-hmm. I love I loved cowfish when it opened and I love the idea of cowfish, but I really have felt like in the last like year or so I don't know, it sort of feels like it's becoming a shell of what it was. Like everything is kind of getting a little more simplified and stuff. So, I've got to go through and get a refresh, but I I would not want this to go away because I love the what's shaken tuna bacon sandwich yep. still. And, you know, and they do unique sushi rolls. I wish the menu hadn't gotten so pared down, but I still like I looked recently and I think there was like a couple of things that I was like, oh, this looks like new offerings. Yeah. So. Uh, and the core stuff that I love is still there, but I'm with you. It feels like maybe because they're a third party operated restaurant that they lost some steam Yeah, in it. And I feel like maybe that was hard for them to overcome and now now something needs to like reinvigorate some energy back into it but yeah. it definitely lost something 
from yeah, those it, first couple of years. It just doesn't feel the same when you go in. You know, yeah. it feels a little. I don't want to say it's cheap because it's not. It's not cheap. It's not that. It's just something about it is like that. It's. I think you said it right with the energy. The energy's yeah. gone. The drinks are great too. Still, I like. I will always go with somebody there for that buffalo and blue bacon and uh, or whatever it's called. The, yeah. And you know, so I, I I'm like hold on to that little thing there. Yeah. I I want them to just get like a general manager or something that has a passion. Yeah. Because it feels like somewhere in management there, someone lost a passion for it, and they're and, just doing it yeah, yeah yeah and i mean i understand why they they hit a lot of roadblocks coming out they had these interesting food items there that people were lining up people still line up like crazy for this place but long waits mm-hmm. um sometimes very hit or miss on when your food came out if it was going to be hot or cold yeah so a lot of issues like that going into it um but ultimately fix fix those problems and it's still a awesome awesome place and last but not least NBC Sports oh, Grill keep it, and Brew. Keep it. Yeah. This is my go-to place at City Walk. I agree. Always. I, I have nothing else to say about it. That is, I think it's the best place for no matter what you're looking for, for drinks, for apps, for food. It, it's right there. Um, hey, keep it. Keep it. And now we will pause for a five-minute memorial for Emeralds. I will remember you. Cause you're not there anymore. Will you remember me? You won't cause you're not there anymore. Don't let this pork chop go. I, that's all I can remember. I don't say pork chop. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so oh, that's it. Uh, of course, down in the comments below, uh, leave us fun comments on what you think is good at City Walk, what you think should go. Uh, any ideas, like we said, maybe some convert them to quick service, you know, that this, that, the other. We want to read about it. So thank you so much, Rhino, for having this conversation with me. And thank you to everyone out there for listening and watching to this. Uh, if Watching to this. I always say that. Watching this. If you need more information, head over to disunplugged.com, home of our show notes page for the show and all the others on the Disunplugged podcast network. You can find links to our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can also find a link to our email address, uopodcast at disunplugged.com. And then if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead, hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell so you get notified anytime we have a new video. Leave us those comments, like I said, and hit that thumbs up or thumbs down, whatever. It's the same algorithm. Like it just shows engagement. So uh, it just makes us feel better when it's an up versus a down. And then, of course, if you're listening to this on iTunes, go ahead, subscribe, rate, and review us. So that's it for this episode. Uh, We will be back with you next week for another episode. Uh, We're going to be getting ready to do a question and answer episode coming up here. So go ahead and start sending us your questions, uopodcast at disunplugged.com, or there will be a thread on the uh, Dis Universal Facebook page at some point. I will try to make sure it gets out there so everyone knows. But we're going to be taking questions very soon. But until then, we'll see you again next week with another episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. Until then, remember, we still haven't changed the name. Bye.